This inspired me. Hey, it's Care. Welcome to my Take at the Lake. This is another edition of probably a series. I'll probably do more in these as I go along. This is the second one, and I know I have one or two others already in the works, so it'll probably be ongoing. What I want to do is show you things that I've been inspired to do and share with you where the inspiration came from. I just watched a really interesting video about YouTube and its algorithms and its male dominant biases and dominant in a bias towards shorts and are shorts going to be the death of long form video, which is primarily what I do. I find shorts 10 times more work and more of a pain in the arse to do than an hour long video. I don't know how people do it, quite frankly, but there's big money in it, supposedly. Maybe not. I don't know. I don't believe everything I hear online. But what I've noticed is, you've heard me complain about this before, that people don't give people credit for the ideas that they're sharing. Oh, look at me. I'm so brilliant. I came up with this idea and I'm sharing it with you, completely forgetting that they got it from somewhere. And so this inspired me series. Uh, I think I'm going to start a hashtag called this inspired me. Hashtag this inspired me to encourage people, real people, to share videos that inspired them to to create different things. Giving credit where credit is due because I'm I'm all about that, right? And it may, it may be counterintuitive. It may be by pointing you, my subscribers and my viewers, to videos that inspired me takes you off my channel. And that's probably counterintuitive. <laughs> that's probably, you know, going against some secret YouTube code. But I don't want to take full credit for these ideas because they're not my ideas. I give, I give you my ideas when I have them, but I, I try to tell you where they came from. And so I, yeah, quite frankly, I don't care what it does because the algorithm, you just can't. I can't explain it. I don't know how it works. I don't know how it works. I'm just going to leave it at that and just not even get cranky about it. These these two things were inspired by four different creators. I'm going to move this over for a moment and talk about this. I recently mentioned this book, Walt Disney's Fantasyland. I got this at St. Vinny's. I believe it's 1965. And it was, it was falling apart. The cover was completely off of it. And so what I ended up doing was taking, I don't know where I put it, but I took out the part of the book that had Maleficent story in it. I think that's Cinderella, Sleeping Beauty. Why can't I keep them straight in my head? It's the one that Maleficent is in, whatever that is. I took that out. And I also took out 101 Dalmatians because those are my two very favorites figure. And I, I kept the cover. I put the rest of the pages are going in my junk journal stash refresher kits. If you're interested, that's where the rest of those 1965 pages are going. And they're beautifully illustrated. I wish I could show you my Maleficent one. I don't know where I put it. Someplace safe. But I've turned this book into a watercolor book. And both of today's projects that I have going are both sewing related. I found this book by myself. This is 100%, 100% inspired by Willa Wanders. I believe she is the creator of Fodder School, which is about three years old now. And if you've not seen it, there's Fodder School video hops all over YouTube. And they're great. Each person who's either taught or participated in fodder school does a video on what they learned there. And it's amazing. Just amazingly fun, fun, creative stuff. Fodder school is a school. I believe it's on Teachable. But if you go to Willa Wander's videos, she's the channel name is Willa Wander's. I will link it below to her videos. She links fodder school in her description. So you can check all of that out. This is based on her video watercolor for relaxation and i love that idea for a number of years i was a commissioned artist meaning people paid me to do portraits of their homes portraits of their dogs i kind of kept it to dogs in houses because i'm not real good doing people and when people wanted me to do art for their living room, they wanted it to match their couch and their throw pillows. And to my brain that went to fine art school, 
fine art does not match your furniture. <laughs> you know, you don't buy a Picasso because it matches the living room couch. You buy a Picasso because it's Picasso. You know what I mean? So I, I stayed way away from that and just did pet portraits and home portraits for a long time. That's how I made my living. But as you do, when you do something you love for money, you kind of burn out on it. It kind of it becomes the work then and it kind of takes all the fun out of it so for a long time i i haven't painted for fun because it always felt like work there was always a, a a piece that needed to be done at the end and it had to meet customer expectations and and there's a lot of pressure in that and it it took the fun out of watercolor and i love watercolor i love throwing in backgrounds and these are made with fun sprays but this is the kind of watercolor stuff i love to do just throw in some color and spatter it with water and throw in some salt and see what you end up with. I love this kind of stuff. So when I saw Willow Wander's video, Watercolor for Relaxation, I jumped on it. And it's just a, it's a completely silent flip through. I don't even think she has music on it. It's just a flip through of a watercolor book that she has done for watercolor for relaxation. One of the best parts of watercolor for me is the swish, swish, swishing of the brush in the water. Spraying it, it's kind of like rain on the paper. And it's just a, a tactile and a, sort of an ASMR kind of thing for me. I just love it. And so I jumped on that idea and I couldn't wait to make my own book for watercolor for relaxation. The reason my palette is out here is because one of the things that I noticed from her book is that she uses a very limited palette and the same palette through the entire book even though sometimes she just uses a couple of the colors and that makes that spread or that page look completely different than when she's using them all that ties everything together and so this whole book that she has done is very cohesive all the pages go together all the colors work together and it, it, I can't tell you enough good things about it if you're the least bit interested in watercolor I suggest you watch her video because it's just so much good stuff in one place and she doesn't even say anything she doesn't even talk so these are the pic the paints that I decided I, I remembered I had bought this palette a long time ago and I only had the three primaries in it and a green for some reason and then I decided to fill it with the colors. I picked a purple. I mixed my own teal color, of course, opera, ultramarine blue, sap green, I think, a lemon yellow, pale hue, I think. I had, hey, I have it all written down. Check me out. I have it. I have it right here. I don't have to guess. Windsor and Newton, dioxinine violet, two thirds cobalt blue hue, plus one third viridian to get a nice, teal those are holbein colors holbein's opera holbein's opera ultra marine holbein's sap green holbein's permanent yellow light not lemon permanent yellow light Payne's gray and a permanent green number one both holbein so they're all holbein except for the windsor and newton purple and those are the colors that i'm the only colors that I'm going to do in this book. And so since I have that palette and these are the colors I'm using for this book, I can I can just grab these things, my handy dandy traveling brushes. So I can grab these three things and go, go paint somewhere. I What I did for the paper is I took every mixed media pad or watercolor pad that I had there and they all happen to be the same size I, I took pages out of several pages out of all of them folded them in half and that was the that's the size of my paper and you'll see it my my pages are quite a bit smaller than my cover and so it's kitty wampus it's the first time I ever bound a book like this it's like Coptic stitch or something. I don't even know if it's Coptic stitch. I don't even know what it is, but I watched a video. I want to say Sea Panda. She's the one that does all the book binding. If I can find that one, I, I will. I'm sure I can because I just watched it to do this. Anyway, I'll link that one below too. So I've never done this before. It's Kitty Wampus, but look at it. It's an old book. It's falling apart. 
who cares I don't care the whole reason of doing it this way is because it they lay flat ideally but I think because mine is so thick a lot of you know if, if well it lays flat right now but when I'm doing pages in the back it still lays flat but there's a gap under here so I've just been putting something underneath it to hold it up and as you see I've done a couple of things now this was just to get watercolor down on the page one of the things Willa Wanders did was write in here poetry or words or something I may do that I may just doodle like make it look like faux washi tape I may do just some simple black pen line work I may write the lyrics to my favorite songs I don't know I don't know what I'm gonna do with it yet it doesn't matter I just wanted to put watercolor down on watercolor paper. I wrote down, I took notes while I was watching her video, Watercolor for Relaxation. I wrote down all of the different kinds of things she did. I drew out her cover. Her cover has various fabrics that have been dyed, I think with the same colors that she's using or somehow they're all related. The edges are rough and torn. Some of the pages she just did various rectangles in, all over the page, just various shapes of rectangles, and then painted them in. Uh, one, maybe my idea, if it's in parentheses, might be my idea, I don't know. Just throw in a background, like I do, and then add a quote. I like that idea. She, I think she used, I, I can't remember now what's hers and what were mine, but adding various leaf and plant shapes, very easy. Throw in a background and then just do ink work on top i don't know what that says or means upside down hearts she did all all the hearts in different greens but one she did in red in the center then there's the wavy lines and then color swatches all over everything a few florals i'm not big into florals so you know there but i got pages and pages and pages of ideas on what to fill this book with because I don't, I don't just come up with this stuff on my own. Very few of us do. Where she had florals or hearts, I picked this kind of funky leaf shape. I, I just put it on a piece of paper, cut it out, and then traced around it so they'd be about the same. But of course, you know, I have to have paw prints. There's a couple of these throughout, maybe two or three. And I'm just having fun with watercolor, letting the colors mix on the page, different colors. This is salt. People ask me a lot, what do you use salt for? Why do you have so much salt with your watercolor stuff? Because it does this, magic. Uh, this one is just spraying, spattering water when the paint's not quite dry letting it mix on the page, adding water to get those blossoms and bleeds, adding water, just experimenting with color, just experimenting with color. No pressure. The only purpose of this book is to enjoy putting water to paint and paint to paper. That's its only purpose. Uh, I don't know if I've done any more. Oh, I did that. That was kind of interesting and fun. No Great Shakes. It was This was inspired entirely from a different video. I'll link that below. I just remembered that I, was, I watched another video and uh, she had five or six different ways to play in your mixed media art journal. And one of the things she did was just throw color on in different ways with flowers in mind but she didn't paint flowers she just put color down and then inked in the flowers later and I thought that was great fun but I, I really enjoyed this like there's just a whole bunch of color play watercolor play I don't know if you can see it but there's purples and greens and reds and oranges and yellows and blues there's every color down in those dots and then I just black inked over it. I love how that turned out. And part of this, except for my, my wayward petal, I don't know what I was thinking there. Uh, part of this, you know, I could use what, oh wow, that was really cool. Take that idea and put it to a more formal piece or do a more formal painting of, what are they, sunflowers, whatever, delphiniums, forget-me-nots, weird kind of rose. They don't have to be anything. 
Oh, there's more salt because that's what I do. I love salt and watercolor. That's what the salt does. Just adds so much life and vibrancy. Now this, all these colors just melded together. And I love how it turned out. The greens, ah, I wasn't crazy about how the greens worked. But then I put the swirly lines in it and I like it much better. You know, so if you don't like it, just add another layer is my mantra. <laughs> if you don't like it, just throw another layer on there. Do some more ink work. Maybe go in with white Posca pen or white gel pen and brighten some of these darks up. The good news about this, Janet Nash always talks about dipping in and out of projects. They're never done. You can, you can leave it. And come back to it next week and add more to it and add more to it and maybe in the white spots i could write some beautiful quotes some inspirational things some inspirational words i mean there's a lot that could be done to this or it could be done that's entirely up to the to the person doing it there's another paw print now willa's book looked like she had taken full sheets of watercolor paper and broken them down well i only had one full sheet of watercolor paper left and that's not enough to make a book so i kept my one and like i said i tore pages out of every book now I've, this is seriously heavy watercolor paper this might be that new meaden it might be the windsor and newton 25 percent cotton paper i don't know mixed media paper but what i did to get this deckled edge and to get it to look like it was handmade paper or full sheets broken down i'll throw in some pictures here i i stacked them all together and i put I just dipped one edge in water and I let it soak for a little while. And then I took a small wire brush and just roughed up those edges, roughed up those edges like crazy. Now I added, I counted my pages. I had 18 and I thought, well, that's just stupid. You might as well have 20. So I grabbed two more and I put them on front and back because you'll see they're not roughed up. They're not deckled at all because I did these first I, I let them soak for a little bit and get soft and then i held them real tight and i scrubbed them with that brush and when i was happy with how mucked up they were then i dipped the other end in then i dipped the, this part in let it soak for just a little while and that's why it's all wavy and kitty wampus and then i held it together and i scrubbed it different directions back and forth up and down sideways diagonal until i got it roughed up and then i did the same thing to the top so it's it's not what it looks like it's not handmade paper it's not even really good paper it's crappy paper dressed up like good paper you see i don't think i have any more i had the paw prints the leaf shapes the stripes the leaf shapes the stripes and that's so far all i have done but i'm i'm really enjoying it and i wanted to bring that to you now the next one is mostly inspired by janet nash and her slow stitching she always makes it look so relaxing and easy and comfortable a comfort craft it's the perfect thing for gentle journaling which is one of her hashtags gentle journaling and I'm not a sewer. I don't like to sew. It frustrates me to no end. Sewing straight lines on my sewing machine, I'm good. I'm all right. I, I did recover my my outdoor swing a couple of times out of pure desperation, need to do so, but it's not something that I would choose to do. Well, lately, I've been looking to relax at night versus working until I go to bed to just sit down, cozy up on the couch with Bitsy, but I can't just sit there. I've got to do something. And I used to crochet, but ugh, the projects get so big. And what do you do with all the blankets? And we don't have any babies anymore. And ugh, I just don't even want to do it anymore. So I'm not going to crochet. So slow stitching has been needling at me and needling at me. Ah, no pun intended. Needling at me. And then Janet came up with her, let's do, let's slow stitch whimsical cats. And and she's done owls before, very cute. And then she did the cats. And then she did some more with the cats. And I kept saying to myself, 
where's the dogs? Let's do whimsical dogs. And so I made myself, I went to the internet and I found a dog. Well, several dogs. <laughs> and I started with this one because he already had stitches. You know, he already, he's already sewn. And I just thought he was so cute. And so I cut out, of, I had an old fleece sheet and some old material, an old t-shirt, and I started slow stitching. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's me. Slow stitching. Dogs. Of course, she's since come out with slow stitched pups. Great fun. I just love them. So I have to, I've only tacked his tail on with glue, but I, so I have to slow stitch his tail on. I have little black pieces for his nose and his eyes. And I think I'm going to Posca pen on a little pink tongue and a little his little note his little mouth i'll probably put the black material on and maybe if i can figure it out do little french knots for his in white embroidery floss for the eyes i'm not sure but i love him i also did a paw print just because that was my first thing i think i did was my paw print and it's you know it's lesson number one don't pick woven fabric because it just falls right apart <laughs> that's why it looks worse than it actually is i mean it's not great but this was a scarf and it's all coming apart but that's okay it's my first one and it doesn't have to be anything so i have i have these guys i want to do different shape i want to i want to uh i got more scrap material and I figured this lace would make good messy fur right so now she's slow stitching so I've got my little dogger put his tail back I got my little dogger my mom got me these a few years ago if my dog was my boss my life would be perfect uh, well my dog is my boss and plus I have tons and tons of these that are actually useful these are from the Dollar Tree and they're you know, they just, they're, they're not great as hot pads. So I sewed it together. And this is based on what I, I saw Janet slow stitching the other day. And she had a hot pad that she sewed pockets to. I think it's a hot pad. She sewed pockets there for, you know, she can tuck in ribbons and floss and stuff like that. Um, and I, it's just a giant needle book. I may sew a piece of fabric in here so that I could put more pins in here or more needles in here and keep them with my sewing kit because I didn't know what else to do with these. They're so cute. I love the color, but I didn't want to use them as hot pads. For Easter, in my Easter basket, my mom got me this beautiful, I'm pretty sure this is from Dollar Tree too. It is just pretty. It's, it's not me you know like my friend leanne would look at that and go really <laughs> you like that it's more her pink and flowery and pretty and girly but i just love it i love the the colors that are on it i, I just love everything about it again i have tons of dish towels that i that i, I have so many that i don't have room for another and this is too pretty to get junk all over and so i thought well i'll just use it for something i don't know what I don't know what well i went to walmart the other day and i picked out some coordinating material and some coordinating floss colors and i'm gonna slow stitch something i'm thinking on the inside i'll cut these in the shape of paws paw prints not so they're this is four toes and a pot and a pad I think it'll they'll all have to be together I don't know I'm, I'm working it out but I'm thinking paw prints so when you open it up there's paw prints on this side and just a lot of slow stitch mess on this side they'll have to be pretty neat though and maybe on this side it'll look like paw prints in the flowers I don't know but I'm quite looking forward to it and it's completely inspired by Janet Nash though as you do, you know, you once you start something, I went looking for some beginner stitches. And when I, when I lock on to something, I, I go and I try and learn everything I can about it. Well, of course, embroidery and needlepoint and 
and sewing and all that is an entire universe unto itself and I just want to keep it simple I don't want to get crazy with it in fact I didn't want to buy any supplies I have bags and bags of material what I what did I need this for well I didn't have anything that matched this plus these are neat it's clean they're pressed you know I could just start rather than having to find the stuff and having to iron the stuff etc so I have to credit a couple other youtubers and their videos uh, for inspiration and education for sim slow stitching. Sarah Homfrey, H-O-M-F-R-A-Y Homfrey. Sarah Homfrey Embroidery is the name of her channel. I'll link it below. She's got, she is an embroidery person by trade. That's her job. And so she does a lot of, a lot of wonderful tutorials on YouTube. And then the channel name is Joe Piece of Pie, but it's not what you think. It's Peace, P-E-A-C-E of Pie, P-I not the food the mass <laughs> joe piece of pie studio i'll link that below as well i got some really great ideas from her videos about what a kit would look like because i want to just be able to keep it in one thing in the living room so when i go in the living room i don't have to find it all haul it all carry it all it's just right there waiting for me I know I have a cool little basket I can put it all in and, and keep all my stuff together. So thank you all, Janet, Sarah, Joe, and Willa, for all of the inspiration. I appreciate it. And the reason I'm bringing this to my viewers is because I hope that if they're inspired too, that they'll go look further. I, I'm not the end-all be-all of ideas. I have a lot. Many of them are my own original, but most are not. And it's important to me to share that. Whatever you do, whether you decide to do a watercolor for relaxation book, or I don't know if you're noticing a theme here, but it's it's stuff to do that's low pressure, that there is no right and wrong, there is no end result, and the whole point is the doing of it, not the thing that it is when it's done, at least with these particular projects. As I said, I will link all those below. I hope you found some ideas and inspiration here. P.S. Please, if you have watched more than one or two of my videos, if you come back here now and again, please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell because recently I'm pretty sure people aren't getting notified that I have new videos out because none of my videos are performing like they should. You know, the algorithm gods are in a in a funk. Oh, oh. 65 of percent of people who watch my videos are not subscribed. You may think you're subscribed because you're here a lot, <laughs> but you haven't actually hit that subscription button. And subscription is always free. Subscribing to the channel is always free. At least it is for now, has always been. There are things like YouTube memberships that cost money. There are Patreon things, but that's a different platform. But to hit the subscribe button is totally free and much appreciated. Thank you in advance. Until we meet again. Go love up your Beasleys. Because that's what they're here for. Montague at the lake. Out for now.